going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to be talking through today's NBA slate, just four games on the slate. It's going to be a little one, and it's a, it's almost like a turbo slate. But uh, I, I I didn't play this weekend. I was uh, I actually did okay in golf because um, I, you know, my six of six has made just enough. I had just enough Tyler Duncan, you know, um, kind of tilted at myself because the, the other 6,900 pivot, the the Eric, uh, as we spoke about, the Eric, Eric with a C. With a C, uh, had a big run. But uh, but really tilted about Friday. Just I, I made a lot, you know, a switch for those of you guys who were in a Discord. Like I, I switched off of my original lineup. I left it in the single entry, the ten dollar, and like the the other the lottery and everything, which it came like in I think I don't know eighteenth in the lottery. It would have won the the two twenty two for a hundred k pretty pretty easily actually, even with the double overtime in the game that I only had one piece of, which is Paul George. So I was a little little tilted at myself. Um, it's it's happened a few times lately and. Look, it's not gonna, you're not going to get it right all the time, but the 100K certainly would have been nice. So we're back at it tonight on a four-game. We're going to have to try and find ways to get different on this little one. Sheets, how was your weekend? And then let's uh, jump into the slate. Yeah, uh, not to get into all of it, but I had a fun weekend. We full faded the main event uh, in MMA, and um, we got lucky. They actually postponed the main event like after the slate started. So we had a huge edge. Made money. That it could have done better. I'll obviously, we could always could have done better, but but it was, it was, it was uh, that was nice to see. Uh, we had we did have a live sweat yesterday, which I fired up kind of impromptu and ended up getting third in like the uh, in the, in this in the early fadeaway for a couple of thousand. We had Brandon Cruz on talk about NASCAR. He gave out the winner actually somehow um, with Kyle Busch, uh, and then um, yeah, just a pretty pretty busy busy all weekend. Mm -hmm. um, ready to ready to handle the little one gamer or the four gamer, whatever you want to talk about. Yep. Uh, we got, we, you know, we, we've got the four gamer, I guess you can call it the one gamer cause it's going to be Detroit central. Uh, uh, and I, and we'll get into that one. I guess that's the, what do you have? That is the second game or the first. You have the, I have that as the first game jump right into it then. Yeah. So I guess, uh, Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars and lame beer, they're all out, you know? <laughs> so, so, uh, we're either gonna, you know, I don't know whether we trust Vinnie Johnson uh, starting cause we usually like to have him coming off the bench. But aside from that, uh, Let's see who else we got playing for Detroit. We have Alec Burks at 3,500. Um, we have James Wiseman at 3,700. We have Killian Hayes at 4,600. We have Diallo at 3,600. And we have Bagley at 4,500. So we have one, two, three, four, five guys that I wouldn't mind playing right off the bat. I'm a little bit surprised that this line is only six. Um, I guess Charlotte stinks. I, mean, I don't know. really bad. But, I mean, it's uh seems like a pretty pretty easy game to just run it back with LaMelo. Uh, easy enough that it's probably going to be, like, insanely owned. Like, that, 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 that whole deal. It's going to be crazy, know? yeah. So, so may maybe we maybe we shouldn't do that. But that that's, that's definitely the... The logical thing to do is play all those Detroit guys I mentioned, run it back with 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 the uh, with the mellow, and just kind of you know be on our way. Uh, as you said, is in the intro to this, uh, it's going to be difficult to get different because that's what you're going to get different from. Right, and 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 for what it's worth, I think there's two ways within this Detroit side that you can get different. Maybe even three, you could argue with, but Isaiah Livers should be the the lowest owned, and I think he'll start actually. Um, I think that's something you could take a chance on because I think that Corey Joseph, um, I would be open to taking a chance on, but Diallo, Burks, Hayes, and Wiseman are going to look like the best plays. And it's really hard not to want to play all of them, to be honest with you. I'm okay. If you want to play just two, Isaiah Stewart's a great play also. I mean, you're just not going to find other guys like this on this, on this kind of slate or any slate really. Um, you want to, you, you, you definitely want to get some Marvin Bagley exposure, but Livers and Corey Joseph, potentially RJ Hampton are the three guys who you could use to get different. Um, I have to think a little bit more about the Hampton thing. We're used to seeing Detroit with a ton of bodies. They've only got 10 guys. They've got 10 guys available tonight, but the usage is going to, you know, and, and, and the, and the playing is going to be pretty condensed, I think, um, to, to eight guys, maybe nine with Hampton. I don't expect Magruder to play a ton of minutes uh, if he plays at all. So I, I'm I'm just like having a hard time not on this slate play, putting four guys from Detroit in. And even putting in three would be different enough to, to do something. It's just a good matchup anyway. So 
I like the idea of trying to play four of them and run it back with something. And you have pretty reasonable runbacks in Rozier, Lamelo, uh, and Mark Williams would be the three the three guys I'd consider. I think Lamelo is the best one of them of them all, and I think that getting some Mark Williams definitely makes some sense to me. I don't think I would go any further down on Charlotte. I think you could argue for Gordon Hayward uh, with the monster game on Friday, which would have helped me win the money had, had I had I left the guys in. Um, I don't know if they're going to extend Ubre's minutes. I, I don't think they will right yet. Um, so I think that's really it. I think, that, I think that playing one of LaMelo, I think LaMelo with like four Detroit, sadly, it's going to be pretty popular, but that's, that's, that seems like the logical way to build even in a cash game. Right. Yep. All right. Well, let's see what we can find elsewhere to see if we can get different. And as I, re- I just, just to re-mention it, I do think that liver's, may end up getting a lot more run than he's being projected for. Um, and he's not the most productive guy per minute, but he is one way to get different at least who's for a guy who's going to play some minutes. All right, let's move on to, uh, to Philly and uh, Miami. Um, boy, I'll tell you, if, if you don't think JLL Embiid is trying to make an MVP run, I think that you're sorely mistaken. Um He's looked, he's, he's been aggressive. He's looked pretty great. That, that game with Boston on Saturday. I mean, you mentioned Lillard before we got on air, which wow. Congratulations. What a game. But I mean, did did anybody happen to see the end of that Philly Boston game live? I I happened just to turn it on. And that was an absolutely ridiculous finish um, with Embiid hitting, hitting a 75 footer, but just after the buzzer to, to, that would have tied the game after Tatum hit a three to put him ahead. It was just wild. Anyway, uh, all this to say that Embiid is going to be popular and I like him. Tough matchup, but Embiid is, you know, Embiid at home in a big game is is never, never a guy I'm worried about. Uh, the other ones I'd consider would be Harden and and Tobias Harris. Uh, not all that excited by either of them. One guy who you could use for fringy value, like to get away from some Detroit, is DeAnthony Melton. But I don't really feel great about it. Um Maybe maybe the, the best thing to do is take the very low-owned Tyrese Maxey and pair him with your Detroit Charlotte stuff because there's a low-owned guy who actually has a ceiling. Now, obviously, we don't love the matchup, but I, I do think, you know, Maxey gets the, the important minutes and his minutes have tended to fluctuate, but he's at least got a ceiling. So he's another guy who just struck me as something you could do a little bit different um, on this slate. I don't really love anything on the Miami side. I think that if I had to play anyone, it would probably be Bam. Uh, I, I do think Jimmy Butler going back to Philly has some. You know what? A low on Jimmy Butler back in Philly, that's something I'm willing to get to give a to give a shot to. Um, I might I might, I might consider an, uh, Butler as as maybe a maybe one of the higher spends to pair with my Detroit Charlotte stuff. So I actually think that Butler maybe is. I, I said it too quickly. I think he's my favorite uh, Miami piece. How about you? I think the combination of Lamelo and, and Embiid is going to be very popular, um, yeah. and, and certainly makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm not getting anybody else in this game, though. Um, for me, like, listen, if you're going to build this way, if you're if you're going to play Lamelo with the Detroit's, um, I probably would probably fade Embiid in that in that build, right? Right, um, and I think that the that the, the way to do that. Uh, is is as if you wouldn't mind as we transition like into the next game, like what you could do instead of playing Embiid, like you could play like like Randall and Tatum like together or something like that, mm-hmm. um, and try to get away with that. Maybe not even play Lamelo in that build. Do you know what I mean? Like that that's a, at least you get a little bit of correlation there. Um, uh, so I mean, listen, there's there's not a lot of high of high salary guys, it's either Lamelo or Embiid or or, or that's it, you know, Tatum and then Tatum and, and Randall. Or yeah, unfortunately, I, th- I think Tatum and Randall is going to be like significantly more popular than Embiid and Jimmy Butler, for example. Well, right. No, but what I'm right. Well, that's true. But if you play those guys together, you can't play Embiid. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. I got you. So that's that's the thing. Like I would say, fade Embiid, and then like I think Tatum is going to be a lot more popular than Embiid for what it's worth. Just just for what well, that's interesting. I think Tatum is going to be insanely popular with Nigel and Brown. And the other thing you could add into this is if you want to, you know, turn this into more of a, more of a shit show is I, you know, presuming he plays, you could throw Derek white into the mix. Also. Um, he looks, you know, obviously he looks really good, but uh, well, he's probable. So he's playing. So he, he rates will it really well. So if you want to play white and Tatum and, and Randall and hope for overtime or something like that. Um, and then just fade, 
uh, and then fade uh, one of the studs, whether it be Lamella or Embiid. That's that's definitely something you can do. Yeah, and and, and I'll, I'll add to to that. I I totally understand. I agree with that. I, I do think that if you're going to play this game, Derek White looks like a really good play. He's going to be crazy popular. I think that the easy thing is like pivot to a, a quarter own. Like if he's if, if Marcus Smart's really going to be twenty five percent owned of what Derek White is, just play Marcus Smart. Like. I, I like White's offensive game better. I like his DFS game better, but I, I think that overall, like Smart is is shouldn't be. You know, the, there's a few point difference in the uh, in the projections between them, and I will be happy to play Marcus Smart instead at at ten or twelve or fifteen percent versus the fifty percent of Derek White. Um, that's I guess the best the best way to get a little bit different here. I think Robert Williams is a really interesting play. Um, it's another way you can sort of get a little bit different on this. I don't think anyone's going to play him and we know the guy's got a ceiling. His results always come all, you know, they're always sort of all over the place and the minutes tend to tend to be like that, but he did play 20, 31 minutes in the last game. Most of the time he plays 30 minutes, he's going to score 30 X fantasy points. I think he's a really good play that no one's really paying that much attention to. In fact, I think he might be the, my favorite of the differentiators so far in the uh, lower range. I think that he's just just really solid. If you pair him with the Detroit guys, maybe Lamelo, and then you get the two other spend ups, I think that's totally a viable route to build. And I don't think it's going to be all that popular because I just don't see Williams getting that much ownership. So I think he's interesting. And, and the next kind of like pivot, I guess we could talk about is going to come from the New Orleans game. I mean, if if you want to do this, um, uh, the center spot for for New Orleans, uh, you you could use that instead of like. Uh, Embiid, Wiseman, you know what I mean, or whoever. Even though Wiseman could be power forward, I mean, you could play either. I mean, you could play either. Uh, you want to play Valanciunas? That's a build. I don't think people are going to play too often. But Hernan Gomez, I mean, he's going to he he has incredible upside. I mean, it, 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 and and given you know Valanciunas's propensity to like to just somehow just not be around sometimes. Um, there's no Nance, so. I, this was the so I think that you could use use Hernan Gomez. You know what this reminds me of? You see, you weren't around for this. I don't know if you if you saw what happened yesterday. Do you know there was a there was a misprint in the FanDuel salaries, mm -hmm. and they made uh, Christian Mitu four hundred and ten. Interesting. Did he play much? He did. He smashed. I mean, smashed meaning he scored like fourteen fantasy points. <laughs> he was like he got thirty x. I mean, I don't think he was in any winning lineups. But but because because what happened was was that Gobert was ruled out. So Nas Reed <laughs> didn't matter who what didn't matter. You could play like two dollars for 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 me too. You had you had uh, what's his name? Um, you had Reed center only get like fifty eight fantasy points. That's like that. so. So I don't. I don't think you, you, it even mattered. But it was. It was kind of an interesting thing to see. You know. So. Yeah. So B two at four ten. If you projected to play at all, he was like, you know what I mean. Like he was going to get for twelve x or something like that. You know. Um. Anyway. Uh. So Sharon and Gomez. Uh. That that's that's a way to play. Or I mean, if you really want to, again, this is. You could always go play middling or something like that, and go play the Ingram thing. But if you want to like really just try a dart. I, you know, I you can't play. I was about to say maybe bowl bowl with thirty one hundred or something like that. I'm just looking at four game slate type plays. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I don't think bowl yeah. bowl. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a shot like that. Or, but between bowl Suggs, um, I actually think all of Orlando gets low owned because, and it, as we've said, they haven't really been as productive when they've all been healthy. But I think just playing, you could just put Orlando right now as like another way to to get different. But it's bowl bowl and Suggs on the on the cheap end. And then at the higher end, I do think that uh, Paolo, actually, he's going to have some ownership, but I think he's reasonable. And so is Wagner uh, to me. I don't even mind Fultz that much. So those would be three guys I'd consider for, for differentiation, not priority plays. Don't mind your idea with Joe Val. I think you get a little bit of ownership too. Or Hernan Gomez. I don't see people playing Hernan Gomez because they're just going to use the value from Detroit and Charlotte and not right. know where to Detroit and not know where to spend. So that's kind of interesting. I do think people are going to play a lot of Brandon Ingram. I think if you're playing cash, he makes a lot of sense. But a guy I don't mind fading in tournaments. And I think that you could just pivot off of him to CJ McCollum, who's going to be significantly lower owned. But it is it does feel like a one-game slate. It's not the most fun DFS slate in the world. I do think that some of my favorite differentiators, I mentioned the Robert Williams thing in the, in the mid-tier. I think it's a really, really strong play. 
Um, I, I mentioned uh, Marcus Smart instead of Derek White. I like Jimmy Butler going back to Philly. Those are the things that I'm looking at currently to, to, to try to get different. But as we know, it's a long day, even on a four-game slate. So we might have more news for you by live at 6 o'clock. Well, I mean, I think the fact is, is that you're going to want to pl- – I mean, I think you're going to want to – you're going to want to play two of those three guys. I mean, between, or those four guys, between Embiid, LaMelo, Tatum, and Randall. I think you're probably going to want to play, I mean, at least two, right? Um, and maybe three if you can get away with it. Um, just because the value just allows you to do it. Um, right. but, but like you said, I mean, if you don't, you're going to be different, I guess. You know, instead of playing, you know, like a lineup like this, which they just kind of put up here or whatever. Um, you could play, like I said, like you'd spend up a little bit more at center and play like Joe Val or something like that. Or maybe like you're at Isaiah Stewart, but he's still part of that Detroit stat. People are going to play him. Um, you know what you might be able to do? Maybe you play Harden or something like that. Like instead instead of Embiid, you know, maybe that's 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 something to do. Um, not exactly the greatest matchup, but but <laughs> it's a, it's a, but it's a short slate. You know what I mean? Like I, just you have one guy that, you know, you just need to. If you play Harden, it's not like Harden needs to beat like five, like ten studs. He needs to beat like two. You know what I mean? Right, like he needs right. he needs to be like three guys to for me to make you happy. Um, right, right, right. I don't right. know. I don't know. No, I hear you. Um, I mean, look, I I literally think that playing you you could as of right now, if the slate locked right now, I think playing five guys from Detroit is probably what you do in cash. <laughs> like, right. I really do. I just think it makes too much sense. Um, can't quite get five, the you know, five guys. You could you could actually do it in a certain depending on which ones you want to play, uh, to get to Embiid and uh and Wiseman. In fact, I just well, little this line up here has Lomelo, Randall, and Tatum, and everybody that projects well. I mean, like <laughs> I mean, like I mean it's just too easy in, in a way. Um right. I mean not the one not the Bagley's like any kind of lock or anything like that, but still, I mean. I mean, like I, I have a build, my first build, and and I'm just I'm not I'll, I'll post it on the site and I'll do my my core plays and everything. But my first build, I have six players from the Detroit Charlotte game, and then Butler and Embiid. So you can probably figure right. it out. All right, and you can do well. That's the, well, you know what? If you swapped out Randall and Tatum for Butler and Embiid, I bet you would look very similar. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, yep. The you know, only so, difference uh, is that you're going to have be extremely chalky with Randall and 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 Tatum. I think. Right. That's right. So, so you think the combination of Randall and Tatum will be chalkier than the combination of Butler and Embiid? By a ton, yeah. Okay. Well, well, you know what? And that's, I think that's... I, I think Jimmy Butler is going to end up like five percent owned. He could. It's possible. And and I and I I'll, I'll I'll take my chances. There's a little narrative going back to Philly. It's a tough game. They're trying to win games right now and move up. Um, I, I'll take it. I'll take that chance. Um, by the way, what could make things even really worse today is for Detroit. If Isaiah Stewart is out too, which is totally possible, you might just have, you might just have to play at least four of Detroit right Right now. It's already hard to get away from four of them, but man, if Isaiah Stewart's out also, so it's really hard to play play at least. So, so to, to your point, I just swapped out Tatum and Randall for Butler and Embiid and literally passed out the salary. Like, oh, there you go. (laughs) Take it off. Take it off. That's my lineup right now. (laughs) Well, this this lineup ain't gonna work either. I mean, this lineup would be popular too. I think nobody's playing Butler, buddy. Okay. Uh, I, I, unless unless something weird changes and like and like you get other guys out for like Tyler Tyler Heroes out for Miami. I don't think people are looking at Jimmy Butler today. So we can take that lineup and I'll just play uh, instead of Bagley. I'll just play uh, uh, Val. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hernan Gomez. Something there like you that. go. Okay, that sounds good. Or All we right. could pivot, or we could pivot off of the pivot and play Jackson Hayes. That's what I actually think is, by the way, I did, I did want to mention that. I do think that instead of Hernan Gomez, who's actually not going to be, if he was, if Hernan Gomez was going to be popular, I would say that's a really good play. He, I just don't think Hernan Gomez is even going to be that popular just oh, because you don't need the value. So, yeah, well, I mean, cause you, know, but you have Wiseman and Bagley and all that stuff over there. You've got, you've got everybody on the, on the Detroit side. So and you want to play and beat at center if you can. So, I mean, yep. Yep. Um, yeah. It's a little, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit weird for sure. Um, hopefully we'll have some more ideas. If there's any injuries, it would actually really be helpful on this slate to try to find extra ways to get different in speculation. Um, I do like the Jackson Hayes speculative play though. I think that's, I think that's one I can get on board with. You want, you want, so here's another funny thing that happened yesterday. I don't know how he ended up doing, but so the way the slate was yesterday, there was a 6 PM game and then there was a break and all the value was coming from like seven, seven thirty, whatever. Like they had all those Oklahoma City guys, they were all gonna be they were all good values. I mean, like all of them. 
mean, Giddy, Isaiah Joe, and all that stuff. And then you could run that back with, like, say, Sabonis and or Fox. That was, like, a real easy game. And then you had, like, the Portland game with, with, with Lillard and, like, all these, all these like, Houston pieces that were all going to be cheap. So the, the, there was this random game that was, like, an hour earlier, which was Cleveland somebody. I don't even know who they were playing. So I basically X that out so we play, play time, whatever. And, and then as I was building, I was looking at some what was going on. I don't know what ended up happening, but at the half, Donovan Mitchell had 40 fantasy points at 2% ownership. I don't know exactly how he ended up, but it was I, – I, I don't want to ever X, X, X like games out like that, especially when you have like freaking guys like Donovan Mitchell that can, that can just freaking blast. So, yeah. Uh, any idea that Lillard was owned yesterday? I'm guessing it was pretty. Yeah, bad. he was sixty. He was sixty percent. Okay, so the, nobody had especially a, a great time. No, it was too easy. It was too easy. You know what I mean? You had, you had all these Houston, you had all these Houston guys, and you could play Lillard and Jokic like with impunity. You know? Oh God, yeah. Yeah. So both those guys end up sixty five percent owned, and you had to, you know you had to get everything else perfect. Yeah. Oh man. Um, well, I'm glad I didn't play. I don't think it would have worked out well for me yesterday. Anyway, I would have probably try this. To- this was kind of a fun thing happened. So uh, here's what happened with Isaiah Joe yesterday. So Isaiah, Isaiah Joe was starting a point guard at 3,800. Right. He went off at 70% owned. That's not and, high enough. Right. So hold on. So at the half, he had 2.5 fantasy points, uh-huh. right? And they, they benched him to start the second half. No problem. He ended up with 30 anyway. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. They, so they brought funny. him in off the bench and he made like a hundred threes. Like, okay, we'll let him close. And that was the end of that. <laughs> That's right. He is like the, he's like the guy who, who we probably should like talk about because as, as to fade his chalk when these things, situations come up, but to yep. play like crazy, like it's, it's kind of crazy to me that none of, nobody came up with that on Friday. Like Isaiah Joe ended up like three or 4% owned yeah. Friday slate because the uncertainty. And then he just, of course, went off. He put up like 40 million. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, um, all right. Well, hopefully it'll be a fun night and uh, I'll see you guys live at 6 Eastern. Good luck, everybody. All right, later.